Good morning, traders. Welcome to this week's Elite Wave Forex and Crypto Currency Market Analysis Webinar. I hope you all had a great week. Right, so we've had uh, two significant fundamental news events uh, in the last week. That is uh, the FOMC on the Wednesday, as well as the NFP on Friday. I'm mentioning this because I'm often asked, uh, what is the relationship between fundamentals and the Elliott Wave theory, or do you trade fundamentals? Now, there is no right or wrong answer in that. I'm going to give you an answer with a few charts. We're going to go through a few charts, and uh, that will give an answer to that effect. Okay, so the Elliott Wave theory, that is what we've been analyzing, using to analyze over the years. This is one of the most scientifically researched uh, trading strategies I've ever seen. And this is backed by research and also documented. And uh, this is the strategy that I have been trading over the last years. Now, on the internet right now, I do not think there is anything more accurate than the Elliott Wave theory. Now, it is not arrogance if you can back it up. And we're going to back it up by evidence. And you can also go to our... Um, to our YouTube channel to look at videos as far back as three, four, and six years ago to look at what I'm talking about. Now, before we even get to that, I want you to look at uh, pound US dollar. Before we even look at how we traded the NFP on the, as well as the FOMC in the last week, I want you to look at this chart that we analyzed. This is a video from 2020. If you can look here, this is 9 February 2020. I want you to see how we analyzed pound US dollar, and that will all come into place shortly. So if you go to our channel, just scroll through our videos and go to one on the 10th to 14th of February, that is pound US dollar. There are also timestamps, so that makes it easier for you to just go to a specific video that you'll be looking for. In this case, I'm gonna go to pound US dollar. So I want you to look at how we analyze this. So here I was analyzing that this move should still continue to the upside. Remember, this is two years ago. You will see the higher level structure on this as we go, okay? Let me just take the volume down because I don't know if you can see here the volume on that side. So I'll just narrate over it. So this was 2020 February. That's over two years ago on the pound move. So here we're showing that that's gonna make a corrective structure and it's gonna continue to the upside, okay? So now I want you, um, I've just moved the video to the, uh, I just forwarded the video. Now look at that structure on the video. That is a weekly chart. And I'm gonna show you the relationship between that and what we've got on the current chart. Now, this is the weekly chart on pound US dollar. I know you may not be able to see exactly where we are, where we are but I'll show you on the current chart where we, what we are showing here. So what we were showing here is that, was that pound US dollar was making a corrective structure here it was gonna make a move down. It was gonna make a move back up here to around these levels before pushing to the downside. Now, if you go to your charts, this is a weekly chart, pound US dollar weekly. You will see that we've already made this move to the downside for a couple of hundred pips, this move to the upside for a couple of hundred pips, a thousand pips even, and we are now currently down here on this move. So let's play this some more before I go to the current chart. So that was showing that it's gonna be an expanding flat, it's gonna make a move to the upside and it's going to drop. Showing the three waves up, three waves down and three waves up the respect, the current move there that is currently happening now. Let's go to the pound US dollar move, what I was showing you just now. I'm gonna go also here on the weekly chart. So let's go pound US dollar weekly so you can see what I was referring to here. Then we're gonna relate that to the recent FOMC as well as uh, the NFP on the Friday. Now, this is what I was showing here. On the video, I was showing that that was gonna make an expanding flat. Just go look at the video. It was gonna make an expanding flat. It was gonna drop. It was gonna make a move up and it was gonna drop. How many moves are those? So I'm not even gonna count the expanding flat. I'm just gonna show you one, two, three moves that have been forecasted. And each of those moves, the one from here to here, the one from the expanding flat to the downside, let's have a look at that. So we made a move from the expanding flat coming to the downside, 
So how many, how many pips is that? You can see 1,800 pips. Obviously, it's a weekly chart. We don't trade that in one go. So that was the one move. Then we've got the move when the expanding flat was completed from right here at the bottom after it has made the bigger expanding flat for 2,500 pips. And then the current move that you're seeing to the downside, which is another 1,000, 2,000 pips. So if you count all of this together, that's already 6,000 pips in just these three moves. Now, I'm not saying that we've traded these 1,000 pips in one go. You will see that we don't trade, obviously, in the weekly. This gives us direction. So even when we had the FOMC in the last week, we were not even looking at pound going up. We we're just looking for opportunities to the downside. Now, I'm going to go to the chart so I can show you how we traded just in the last week. Now, let's go through into the lower degree so you can see how we were looking at the lower degrees. Now, I'm gonna start with the Euro because obviously if the pound is coming to the downside, all the pairs that are paired against the US dollar will obviously be bearish. So these are the charts that we shared with our members just before the, N the FOMC. Now, if you may not be able to see clearly, this is the 4th of May on the Wednesday, that is just before the FOMC. What we expected was for the Euro to make a move to the upside and continue to the downside. Now, why are we expecting this to go to the downside? I will show you as well that this was forecasted years back. So that is how we were forecasting the Euro. How did the Euro play out? Let's have a look here after the FOMC as well as the NFP. So the news simply completes the structure. Look at that. FOMC completes the structure. The NFP completes the structure. We are still bearish. We're still looking for more downside. So do you trade fundamentals or do you just look at the technical? So I do not ignore the news. The news only helps to facilitate or to uh, catalyze the moves of the market. So we've got a move to the upside. We've got a move to the downside. Now, this is Euro US dollar. Now, I am going to go onto the website. So I want you to understand where these forecasts come from. It is not just we, in that we came in the last week and we said, okay, we've got the new East event. We're expecting the Euro to go down. We expected the Euro to go down from two years back. Now, I'm going to go to our website. So our website is trading-waves.com. You can go to the website and have a look at that. Now, this on our website, this is a Euro US dollar chart on the four hour, but I'm gonna go to the daily one so you can see. Now look at the daily chart on the Euro. So this is when the Euro was still simply, uh, I'll just give you the number here, 1,13, it was still here on the daily. We're still expecting this to continue to the downside. Now, why are we expecting that to continue to the downside? Because we're expecting the Euro to make one, two, three, four, five, all the way to the downside. So why would I think that the euro will go higher if we've got any news events? The only thing to expect is any pullback to continue to the downside. Now, anyone can focus that weekly chart and see that the direction is going down. But how do you then trade specifically? How do you execute the trade? Because that is the most important thing, which is uh, trade execution. So that was the euro. And in the lower degree, you will see that with the euro, we're expecting that that one, two, three. Now, this is more detailed now because we are on the four hour chart. We are currently in this fifth wave, one, two, three in the red degree. We are going to get a pullback and we're still going to continue to the downside. That is how we traded the euro. I'm going to show you all the recaps on the euro. Now, back to pound US dollar and how we saw this one uh, way back in, um, in April as well. Let's have a look at this one. Now, pound US dollar, what I've shown you from two years back, did not just come from there. Now, look at this. This was on the 13th of March. When was the fundamentals? Just the last week. So from the 13th of March, from two months back, we already knew that the pound was going to do this. Now, this was when the pound was simply still on 1.3. We are now at around 1.2. That's already 700 pips to the downside from this forecast. This is the chart that our members had before. Now, what I've been showing you on the weekly was that we're expecting this to make a move down. Uh, excuse me, not there. We're expecting this to make a move down to complete the expanding flat. This was the expanding flat that I showed you from the video from two years ago that we're going to come down here. We're going to push to the upside and we are coming down here. That's how we see the market. That's how we see the cycles. Now, the question, uh, to answer the question more simply is we do not ignore the fundamentals, but we look at the technicals because you cannot guess how the market is going to react to the fundamentals. So the fundamentals don't move the market. The market reacts to the fundamental and the reaction of the market you will see 
on the technicals. All right, so before we get started, guys, uh, if you'd like to contact us, if you like our content, if you've not already done so, please subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up if you like our content, and also hit that bell notification button so that you get an alert the next time we upload a video. Look out for our contact details under the description of all our videos. That's our email address. Uh, so don't look at that WhatsApp number, just look at the latest video so you can look at the latest number. And we've got our Telegram channel as well as the, the trading wave link. So just look at the latest videos for our latest contact details so you can get to the right links. Now let's get started with the recap of how we looked at the market. And I'm gonna look at all the charts that we looked at for the NFP, let's get started. All right, so for the NFP, this is what we looked at. So this was pound US dollar. You've already seen pound US dollar that we expected that this was gonna make a move to the upside and continue to the downside. There's no brainer, it's no brainer that one because we knew from two years ago that the pound was gonna be bearish in this leg. And let's see how the pound played out after the NFP. This is how the pound played out after the NFP exactly as forecasted, it moved to the upside, it moved to the downside. Simple, simple peeps there, 361 easy peeps, just because of those uh, two fundamental news events that has uh, worked, uh, served as a catalyst in the market dollars pound US dollar. Now let's have a look at more of those charts. So all of them would have been doing the same. Let's have a look at the, the Euro. I've already shown you the Euro. This is the Euro. What do we expect? Exactly the same thing. In the theme of being bearish against the US dollar, you can see that we expected this to make a move to the upside and then make a move to the downside. How does that play out? Like a dream. You can see that there's a move to the upside. We're coming down here. Easy 150 pips just with that fundamental news event. Pullback, we're still expecting more downside on the Euro. Let's look at the more charts. So we're looking at all the US dollar pairs. These are the charts that our members got before the two fundamental news events. The next one is US dollar chief. Let's have a look at US dollar chief. Easy, easy, easy analysis. You can see that we had a passing move. If you'd not understand wave theory, you would have thought that this is reversing and is making a move to the downside. But if you do understand the cycles and the sequences, you will know that the sequence is still to the upside and we still expected more upside. And uh, that is uh, how the US dollar chief played out. Let's have a look at the chart. This is how it played out. Exactly as forecasted, didn't matter whether we had an impulse down, this is 300, so this is 170 pips to the upside. We're still expecting more upside on the US dollar chief. Okay, let's have a look at more. Right, so that was US dollar chief. So the next one will be US dollar CAD. Let's have a look at US dollar CAD, exactly the same thing. So US dollar CAD, if you remember, we focused on that this is gonna make a move to the upside from there. And I'll show you when we start on the weekly chart, why we expected the, we expected US dollar CAD to reverse from that area. Now look at this one, also looking impulsive. This will be deceiving. You'd think that this will con just continue to the downside looking at this, but because we understand the cycles and the sequence, uh, this is how we focus that we expected that this was gonna make a push to the upside with the news event. And this is how US dollar CAD has played out. Let's have a look here on the chart and see how it played out exactly as forecasted. Easy 185 pips. You can do the pips count on how much that was for all for just the last week alone. All right, so that is US dollar CAD. Let's have a look at some more here. Now the DXY, this is, uh, this is just for trade or for direction purposes. It will show you exactly what we expect of the US dollar index. The dollar index, we simply expected this to come down and continue to the upside. How did we know that? It's because of the cycles and the sequences, okay? So that is the DXY, this is how it has played out almost inch perfect like magic, 160 points to the upside. We don't trade the DXY, we'd rather trade the Euro, okay? But not that you cannot trade the DXY, you can if you want to, but we prefer to trade the Euro. It's easier to just sell the Euro against the DXY. Now, the, let's have a look at gold. Now gold, we showed you last week, we had four links on gold showing you exactly how we were forecasting gold. But in this case, I'm just gonna show you that uh, so last week we showed you from here that we pinpointed the reversal on gold around there. Okay, so you had you were with Sandile last week. He showed you this two weeks before. I showed you how we focused the move to the upside right there and the move to the downside. Now we expected a pullback. Now look at this pullback. We expected a pullback on gold and a continuation to the downside. Now you have to look at this. It looks like a dream. Let's have a look. 
This is analysis that is seamless. Look at that. We've got that pullback as expected, the three wave move, and we are coming to the downside. We may make a flat correction. More about that when we start with the analysis in a bit. But there was the forecast. We expected this was going to make a three wave pullback and continue to the downside. If I just show you that chart again, look at that. Expect a three wave pullback and a continuation to the downside. We've got that inch perfect. Look at that one, two, three continuation to the downside. We may still continue to the downside. We may make a flat correction there, but uh, let's have a look at that when we start with the analysis in a bit. That was gold. All right, so let's have a look at more. Pound chief, look at this. This one is amazing. So this is pound chief. Look at that pinpointed reversal from around that area. We expected this to come to, come to the downside like that. So that was the first one. So have a look at this and how we focus to the move to the downside. Let's have a look at how pound chief plays out. Now there is pound chief, that's the chart. How does that play out? How did we know that from right there, pinpointed from right there, it's exactly how this was forecasted. Look at that easy 364 pips that our members got before the move. So that's important. So before the move, so let's have a look at this. Look at that here. That's the focus to the downside. Now we're focusing again, a pullback and continuation to the downside. Let's have a look at the next one. We're still on pound chief. So we continue after that move. We focused again that we're going to get a pullback and a continuation to the downside. Let's have a look here at the pound chief. So if you can look at this, this is the focus. So remember, we got the move here. Easy, uh, 300 pips to the downside. Again, we focused. We're telling the members that as much as we are bearish, expect a pullback to about 50% here. We're still going to continue to the downside. Now, let's have a look here at how this plays out. Okay. Why am I showing you all of this? So that you can have that confidence in the wave theory. We've got that big move to the upside, to the downside, 360 pips. Pullback, we don't trade. Now, that's the challenge. When you are in a trade, how do you know that it's still going to continue in the direction that you have focused it, even when it's doing this or making these pullbacks? That is the, what we provide for our members, that you can still hold the move and let it continue. Look at this here. It pulled back and continued again another 188 peep, 88 pips to the downside, and that is how Pound Chief has played out. Okay. Right, so for the cryptocurrencies, I'm going to show you the cryptocurrencies charts when we start with the crypto analysis video. Okay, I'm not going to go through all these videos, uh, I mean, all these charts before and after. You can uh, check these out. You can check the rest out on our social media pages, on our Twitter, as well as our Facebook pages. You can follow us there. Check those links under the description of our videos and uh, follow us there. So. We have got a 50% special running for the lifetime plan. If you're interested in that, you can go onto our website and make inquiries according to the contact details that we've got on our uh, YouTube channel. Now, let's get into the business of the day. Now we're analyzing what are we expecting into the next week. So let's have a look here. You already know that we are looking for the DXY to continue to push to the upside. Now, this is the weekly chart. I'm not looking at the weekly chart, but the DXY, we know that this should still continue to the upside. Let's go into the lower degree. You've seen with uh, the NFP and the FOMC that we are bullish, bullish on the DXY. Let's have a look here. So what do we expect into the new week? We're expecting the DXY. It has already done what we expected. We've got this three wave pullback. It is giving us this pullback. We still expect the DXY to continue pushing to the upside around 105 level. Euro US dollar, you've already seen why we're expecting that to be bearish. It's because the DXY is looking strong. We expected this to do this. We've already made the move to the downside. That's a pullback. We're expecting this to continue to the downside after making this uh, corrective structure here. Flat correction, we're still expecting the Euro to continue lower. Pound US dollar, how much have we spoken? We've spoken about this so much. So the pound US dollar, pound US dollar already played out as expected. That's the continuation pattern. You've seen why we are bearish pound US dollar. Any pullback here should see the pound continue to trade lower. Okay, so that's what you have on the pound. The US like Caddy, you've already seen that as well. Now, I did say that I was going to show you why we are, we're bullish uh, US like Cat from that level. That is because, look at this one here. Now, this chart from two years ago, when we were dropping here, we, we said that this was going to reverse here. We had a blue box area here. So 
This is our blue box on USD like head. It is simply making this flat correction, one, two, three, WXY. We're now starting to see a move to the upside. Now, the USD like head may start pushing to the upside for a thousands, for 2000 pips and higher into, uh, into this area. But we're not interested in that for now. We're interested in this uh, small space here. So we're seeing USD like head pushing to the upside. So the next target on USD like head is 135, which is about 600 pips from where we are currently. Let's go to the lower degree. Four hours. Now on the four hour, you'll see that we are still bullish with the rest of uh, the US dollar pair. So the US dollar is still strong. So obviously we'll expect US dollar CAD to continue stronger to the upside pullback here. Expect US dollar CAD to continue to around 131 into the new week. Right, US dollar CAD, US dollar chief. Now US dollar chief also forecasted uh, in the last week that it has made this expanding flat. Now it's making this flat correction here. Expect US dollar chief to continue pushing to the upside as well. You, Audi US dollar, I'm gonna show you on the weekly as well. Now look at Audi US dollar. Let's have a look at it on the daily. Now, if you look at Audi US dollar on the daily, we have been looking for this move to the downside to happen from around this area. So let's just show you the structure here. This has made a very interesting structure here, having made one, two, three, to the upside there. So a simple W, X, Y structure and a move to the downside. You'll all remember how we focused that this was gonna reverse from around this area, blue box area here. Now we're dropping any pullback. It's an opportunity to trade this lower. Any pullback like this, this is an opportunity to trade this some more to the downside. So we are still bearish out the US dollar, similar to um, New Zealand. So New Zealand as well had a similar structure on the daily, if we just show you here. So that is the structure on the New Zealand. A simple three wave with a complex B correction here. So rather a complex X correction here, X. So that is a Y here. We expected this one to do that. Now we are dropping to the downside. Any pullback, just like Audi, we're expecting this to continue to the downside. That's because of the US dollar that is so strong. So that is why we expect any pullback to still be a continuation to the downside. There's no reversal in sight. Okay, we know that uh, US dollar ZAR is uh, directly correlated to uh, US dollar CAD. So with that, you can see we've made a three wave move here with US dollar ZAR. So that's the South African rand has made an impulsive move to the upside here. So you can see here we had one, two, three to the upside, one, two, three back, an impulsive move. It will not be surprising to see a pullback and a continuation to the upside back to around the 17 rand area, 17 to the dollar. So that is some more weakness for the rent. Uh, if you look at that structure, that's going to give us a W, X, Y structure. So a pullback on US Lazar would be an opportunity to take uh, this one to around this level. Not good news for the South Africans as the rent plunges against the US dollar. Okay, so that is a US dollar. ZA. Let's go now to the pound pairs. Okay, let's have a look here on pound pairs. So could it be the end of the ups bullish run on the yen pairs, let's have a look. Now, if you look at this here, it looks like we are getting some reversal here on pound uh, yen. Now, pound yen, if we look at the weekly chart, we may very likely be at the end of the upside moves if you look at the weekly chart. So let's have a look here. Now, we have been looking at this structure and comparing it to the US dollar structure, rather pound US dollar structure, that has made a move to around that level. We may start seeing this one make an expanding flat and drop as well for a thousand, 2000 pips or even 4000 pips to the downside if that is the end of the move. Okay, so we're not gonna rush that. We're gonna wait for this to give us an indication here that around this level, confirmation around this pullback here, we're gonna need to get a cycle. And if we get that move here, we're gonna get this 4000 pips to the downside. Let's just have a look here. Am I saying the right number here? So that's over. Yes, about 4,000, 4,000, 3,000 pips to the downside if you get it around that level. But we're going to look out for that. We're going to watch it and look at the, wait for the confirmation of the reversal. As it is now, there is no confirmation of a reversal, but we can start according to uh, what we use as our indicator. We can start trading any potential moves to the downside. So we can start trading any potential setups to the to the downside. So while waiting for that confirmation, that is pound US dollar, US dollar a yen as well. So US dollar yen because of the US dollar still looking pretty strong. Let's have a look here. Could this be the end of the move here? 
So we have been looking for US dollars a yen to give us this structure around this level. It has now broken around this level, but this does not stop this one from giving us a structure like this. Let's use purple there, giving us this structure here, giving us this structure here, which would have been a move, a move, a move, and a move to the downside. So do we start getting a reversal from around that level? It is not likely that this can just move out of here in a straight line. We may start making a move to the downside here, but let's wait for that. It is at a critical level. We wait for confirmation. Do not rush it at this stage, okay? So that goes for all the yen pairs. It looks like we are at critical levels across board. If you look at the euro here, I'm showing you the weekly chart. There is no new trade setup. You should not be trading this or buying this at this level because it has already made these moves to the upside. So this could be the move here on the euro yen. We'll be looking for a move to the downside as follows. So we'll be looking for a confirmation with the indicator that we can execute trades accordingly. Otherwise, we may still come and take the top here. Either way, we're waiting for that confirmation. So it's a waiting game on the yen pairs across board now even on chief yen let's have a look here chief yen could also do the same thing here so that's three wave structure here on the weekly so let's see how this is going to play out here uh, with this structure we've got three down three up could we start getting a move to the downside we wait for that confirmation on that chief yen right so that's chief yen audi yen okay audi yen so let me go down to the lower time frame so across board on the yen pairs we're waiting for this confirmation to tell us if these pullbacks are indeed reversals. But for now, we are going to see this one as one, two, three. We should see a move to the downside here. Any pullback here should see this one at least come break this low or even lower. So we're going to be waiting for that confirmation. New Zealand yen, exactly the same. So New Zealand yen could be doing this structure. We can see this one pulling back to the around this level and we start seeing this one come around this level. Okay, could it be the end of the move on the yen pass? Okay, or we see, start seeing a deeper pullback. CAD yen is a lot clearer because we're going to see this one come down at least back to around these levels. Is that going to be the reversal or is it just going to be a three wave structure like that before we make a move to the upside? So let's have a look here. So we could be having a structure like this. So let's make it like this. So for now, where are we? We are currently here. So we can have this one as an A, B, C corrective structure on CAD yen. Let's see how that plays out. Okay, so CAD yen, that is CAD yen. Gold, we've already spoken about gold so much. We are bearish gold. You've seen the three wave pullback that we spoke about during the trade recaps. We're still expecting this one to continue lower. Now that is the case for all the commodities. Let's have a look um, except for oil, of course. Uh, so on the hard metals, gold, silver, we are expecting continuation to the downside. Look at silver, a clear three wave pullback and a continuation to the downside. This is a pullback, we still expect silver to continue lower. For why we are bearish on other commodities, you can refer back to the previous videos, but let's have a look at this one on the weekly or the daily, let's start with the daily on silver. So silver on the daily, so you can see here, we've already had this uh, bigger corrective structure here as you can see here, that's a flat correction. We are making a move to the downside. So we've been bearish silver. We should see silver come down around 20 and we should see platinum also come down some more. Okay, so as you can see with platinum, we've got that move to the downside. We've got that pullback. So expect platinum to continue lower, especially below this platinum is gonna be very bearish and you can see levels as low as 700 on platinum. Okay, so let's see how that goes. So that is a platinum on the daily. We're still gonna expect continuation to the downside. We're gonna look for opportunities in the lower degrees. That is platinum now. Let's go to Brent crude oil. Brent crude oil looking pretty strong. Uh, as much as we are in, correct, in a corrective structure, the indicator is showing us a very, showing a very bullish move here on oil. Even if we do see oil do make a structure like that, we are simply going to see oil continue to the upside after the completion of this structure. So that will be an A, B complex B correction here, C structure, and then we see oil push to the upside. So we are expecting oil to continue to the upside once this structure, whichever structure it play, plays out here, is complete, we're going to see that pushing to the upside. That is oil still looking pretty much bullish. All right, now pound US dollar, simple continuation to the ups downside here, expecting this one to continue lower here. So we're gonna see a bit more downside here on pound Audi. 
Okay, so let's have a look here on more of these here. Okay, so let's have a look here, Pound Audi. Okay, now let me go to trade recaps because some of this we've been looking at in the week. So let's go to Pound New Zealand uh, and show you what we're expecting uh, on Pound New Zealand. So this is the Pound New Zealand chart before that is the forecast we're expecting this one to start giving us this pullback. So if you look at this one here, it has pulled back, but not impulsively. Let's have a look at how that has played out uh, on Pound New Zealand. Let's see how that has played out. So this is how it has played out. We've got that move that's that's over 841 pips, but took very long. That's a whole month here. But uh, so that is what we may still see here on Pound US dollar. We may still see continuation to the upside with that move here on Pound New Zealand. Looking interesting. So let's wait for confirmation on that on Pound New Zealand. Right. So let's have a look at the rest here. Let's see if we've got more of those. Uh, that is Pound New Zealand. Let's have a look. Do we have more? Uh, yes, let's have a look here on the euros as well. Let's have a look at the euros. Let me run through the pound pass first. So pound chief, you've already seen this one. I've gone through the in detail on this one during trade recaps. This one should still continue to the downside. We've got a pullback here. We should see this one continue to the downside. That is a pound chief, pound cat, pound cat. There's nothing more to say there. That is just a bearish chart. Any pullback, look for this one to continue to the downside. Straightforward, there's no new trade on that one. So that completes all the pound pairs, okay? Now let's have a look at the euros. Now euros, I've, I don't know if I've shown you euro chief as well. Let's have a look at euros. Let's start with the euro pound. Now euro pound looks like that whole structure is now complete. We're going to now start seeing more upside here. Any pullback here on euro pound, you're going to see more upside. Now euro pound here has made a structure like this. It's a one. Uh, let's uh, do that structure again. That's a move to the upside. That's a corrective structure. So that's a move down here. So we may see this one pull back and continue to push to the upside here. So let's see how that is going to play out. Actually, this looks like a diagonal here, expanding diagonal. Okay, it's an expanding diagonal on the euro. Looks like the end of the move. We are seeing a one, two, three here. Any pullback here, we'll see this one push to the upside. And that is confirming that the pound pairs are mostly going to be lower right so pound or euro audi now euro audi just like the rest of uh, the other pairs so this one is going to see this one push to the upside at least back to 154 okay at least back to it's a short move but it's a very uh, it's a very high probable move here to get to around 154 you just need to get the right setup to get the run right and uh, use your own strategy. We use an indicator to confirm our setups. Okay, so as it is here, this is not confirmed yet. We've got a blue box setup here. We've got one, two, three. We've got this one from the blue box, which will expect this one to continue pushing to the upside. That is a uh, Euro Audi, Euro New Zealand. Right, so Euro New Zealand, you've seen this one. I don't know if you've seen this one. This is Euro New Zealand. This is how we forecasted that move. That move to the upside, we forecasted that it's gonna to get to the around that levels. That's why you see Euro New Zealand, even at this level, is still pushing to the upside because we expected it to do exactly that. So that is the chart. So that is the chart before, that is the chart after. That is 890 pips from right here at the bottom when we forecasted that we simply wanted it to get to that level. We've got that move. We can still push slightly higher before we reverse the on the euro. Okay, so that's how we forecasted that. Let's have a look here at uh, the rest. So those are the euro pairs. Which one am I missing? I think I've covered all of those. That's Audi. Let's have a look at the rest of the euro pairs. So we've covered that euro CAD. Just like pound cat should see continuation to the downside. We may see one more down, but once we're out of this structure, or if we start getting a corrective structure here, we are going to see Euro CAD show us a reversal at that level. But at this stage, we just need to get more data and may wait for more confirmation on the Euro. So no yet, no confirmation yet at that stage. All right. Okay, so that's a Euro chief. We expected it to get to that level. We should see Euro chief reverse from around current levels, maybe push a little bit higher to around these levels before the reversal. 
waited for a bit more data for confirmation of that reversal on Euro Chief. Okay, so that's what we have on Euro Chief. Let's go to the crosses. Crosses, this is a Euro, rather Audi New Zealand. Audi New Zealand, we focused this one from way back around this level. So we focus this one. If you look at some of the videos around November last year, we're looking for this one to come down here and continue pushing to the upside. But initially we simply wanted it to give us a structure like this. When we got to that level, we saw it just giving us a pullback and we could see that this was still gonna make a continuation to the upside. And in the last week, this is what we focused it. If we can just show you Audi in New Zealand as well. Now I want to show you this so you can see what our members get before these moves. So this one would be out in New Zealand. So this would be the chart before, as you can see, after that three wave played out here, we saw that this was making a reversal here and it makes another leg to the upside. So let's have a look here at how this one plays out. So that was the move on Audi New Zealand. We saw that this was pulling back. Remember the first one was here around this level after we've made this complex B correction here like that. We've got a move to the upside. We've got a blue box here. We've got a move to the upside for this many, many pips, okay? So when we saw that this was not going down here, we saw another opportunity, which I'm gonna show you now how it has played out. So there is uh, Audi New Zealand. So we are still bullish Audi New Zealand. This is the chart and how it has played out. So if you can look at that, that is 399 to be exact, but just 400 pips there to the upside. So if you look at that, that was the forecast. And this is how it plays out. Easy, easy 400 pips, even though it took a bit of time. Right, so those are the crosses. Let's wrap the crosses. Let's run through all the crosses. Okay, now looking at the rest of the crosses here. So that was out in New Zealand. We are still bullish on this. Any pullback, still an opportunity to trade it to the upside, but don't come and buy this. You want to buy opportunities like this. You want to buy opportunities like this. So decent corrective structure, you want to buy opportunities like this. Anything smaller than that, you let it go. Okay, so that is Audi New Zealand, Audi CAD. Okay, Audi CAD, the Australian dollar is showing weakness together with the New Zealand dollar. So one, two, three here, expect continuation to the downside. Simple blue box area here, you're still gonna see more downside on Audi CAD. Audi Chief, you're still gonna see more downside as well. Let's have a look here. So we've got this three waves down here. You've got one, two, three up here. You may see another three waves down here in the next coming sessions. Let's have a look at how this one plays out. We may be seeing that move to the downside on Audi Chief. We'll wait for more confirmation on that. It has not confirmed this yet. New Zealand CAD continues to the downside. This is just gonna continue lower unless you get a pullback. That's when you're gonna get an opportunity to sell it some more. New Zealand Chief, Nothing new on New Zealand Chief. We've got one, we've got two, we've got three. This may still give us one leg to the downside. How, why am I saying one leg? That's because you've got one, two, three there. You've got one, two, three there. You've got one, two, possible three there before a leg to the upside. That will give you a WXY corrective structure here for more upside on the New Zealand Chief. Let's watch that and wait for more confirmation. CAD, the CAD is obviously strong with oil. So any pullback on CAD Chief, should see this one continue to push to the upside. Same way we continue to push to the upside when we got that. Same way we continue to the upside when we got that. So all these opportunities for more upside, you continue to trade them higher. Okay, so that is CAD Chief. Right, so that is a CAD Chief. Now let's go into the indices. The indices have been inch perfect with the analysis. Okay, so this is the S&P 500 and we forecasted that this is gonna give us a three wave pullback on the indices. It's playing out exactly as we forecasted. We should see 380 around the S&P 500. Anything lower than that is gonna invalidate this structure and that's gonna mean that we're gonna have an even bigger corrective structure than what we have currently. Now, how did we see that the indices are going to reverse? If you look at the Dow Jones Industrial, and I've shown this a couple of times, okay? Dow theory says that two indexes uh, will continue to be correlated, will continue in the same direction as long as they both make higher highs and lower lows. Okay, so if one diverges from the higher highs and makes a low, 
uh, then you are going to confirm a reversal. That is the relative strength between the two indexes. In this case, we've got the Dow Jones Transportation Index, and I'm going to compare it again, show you how we focused on this previously with uh, the uh, Transportation Index. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I'm going to compare it with the Industrial Average, so we can show you how we focused this reversal here. Uh, that's the wrong one. Okay, I want to show that is the Dow Jones Industrial. I want to add the transportation there. So we've got the transportation as well. There we go. Now, if you look at this chart, okay, if you look at this chart and how we saw the reversal, look at the Dow, the, this chart here with the kernels is the Dow Jones Industrial. Okay, it's the Dow Jones Industrial. Now, if you look at the Dow Jones Industrial, let me show you, let me show here this lines. If you look at it here, the Dow Jones Industrial continued to make a higher high here. But if you look at the transportation average, look at what it did there. Now, this is relative, this is not a momentum indicator, this is relative strength. And this is not a lagging indicator, it's a leading indicator because you can see it beforehand. When this happened, that's when I said that we are going to get a deeper pull back here or a correction at this level because the two uh, averages, the two Dow averages have not confirmed each other and they've made a divergence. So why were we so confident that we're gonna get that collective structure at that level? Because we've seen it a number of times before. And a classic example of that is when this happened around 2020, when we got that big uh, move to the downside. If you look at this one here, this again, the transportation, uh, the industrial average made a new high. But look what happens to the transportation. It makes a new low. So then you can see that this is not going to be sustainable. You are going to get a pullback to the downside. And indeed, we got that. And you can go through those two indexes and compare them. You'll see exactly what I'm referring to. So that's why we expected these reversals to happen at these levels. Now, again, transportation in the, uh, uh, this is uh, industrial average. We're expecting a three wave structure. We've got so far here. One, two, three down, one, two, three up, one, we expect one, two, three to the downside. So we can have a WXY structure until it is invalidated here, if it does. But for now, we're looking for more downside. And then we're gonna have a transportation average. We're still expecting this one also to simply give us a three-way structure to the downside as follows. That's a move down, that's a move up, that's a move down. Simply, this is a WXY structure. As follows, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, WXY structure. So that means we are still bearish here on the transportation as well. So expect more downside there. NASDAQ, let's have a look at the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ has made a simple five wave move to the downside. We expected this to make an A and a B, and we are now currently in the C as far as the NASDAQ is concerned. So a simple A, B, C corrective structure you've got here five waves, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Classic example of a one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C structure. That's how we saw that previously at 250%. You can see that your B in red is up to 50, 61%, and we continue lower. So what is the expectation is for this to continue lower to around these levels. That is the NASDAQ, right, UK 100. Okay, the UK 100, we expect it to give us a three-wave pullback here, one, two, three to around these levels before resuming a move to the upside. Okay, so that is the UK 100. Let's look at the, now the DAX. What is the DAX showing us? So the DAX is still in this corrective structure, but it looks like the DAX is still gonna continue much lower than that. We're gonna have this one continue to around these levels. So we've got a pulsing move, we've got this one as a pullback. So we're gonna have this one. If it breaks this low here, we're going to see more downside. Even if that downside does not come at this leg, we can get back and retest this level before continuing lower. So the DAX is still bearish as well. And then we are going to look at the Nikkei. Nikkei, will the Nikkei give us a move to the upside from current levels? So it looks like we've got here the Nikkei, an impulsive move. We've got a three-way pullback. We may see the Nikkei continue to push up higher from around these levels as follows. So let's keep an eye on that. And lastly, on the in in indices, we're looking at the, the Nifty. So the Nifty, the three waves that we looked at to have completed, looks like it is not. So we're still going to have this one as a first leg here 
we may see this one giving us a WXY structure here. So we may see this one make another leg here. So for now, we're still looking for this one to come at least to this level. So we can see if it's gonna give us a deeper corrective structure or if we're gonna still continue to the downside. And that's all I have for you this week, guys. Trade responsibly. If you like our content, please subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like our content. And don't forget to hit that bell notification button so you get an alert the next time we upload a video. Have a great week, everybody. Cheers, bye-bye.